It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Dell U2719D's OSD on-screen display menu system. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel towards the right side. There's also Dell's now common power slit design power LED, which glows a gentle white when the monitor's switched on. You can disable that in the OSD if you prefer. The first two buttons are shortcut keys, so you can customise them to various different things, and I'll go through that shortly. But by default, the first one allows you to change the preset mode used by the monitor. I'll go through these in a little bit more detail in the main menu system. The second button along, by default, allows you to change the input used by the monitor, or have it automatically select the input for you. The next button along is the main menu system, and then there's a little X, which means exit. The main menu is laid out in Dell's usual modern style. They've actually changed it slightly from some of the slightly older models. It doesn't have a little power indicator, power bar. That was sort of a little bit of a gimmicky feature, really, because it really just showed you what the brightness of the backlight was set to, because that really dictates the power of the monitor. So you can kind of have an indication of the relative energy consumption by just looking at the monitor's brightness. There's brightness and contrast as the first feature on the menu. Just what it says on the tin allows you to adjust the brightness and contrast used by the monitor. Input source, exactly the same as I've just gone through with the little quick menu, but it has a reset input source option as well if you want to just reset it to the factory defaults. Next there's colour, that allows you to change to one of the preset modes, various different options. Standard uses the full factory calibration, which on my unit was excellent, and from user feedback I've got, um, it, is, it is a very strong factory calibration you can expect. Comfort view, which is a low blue light setting, which is explored in the review, particularly in the written review. Multi-screen match, this is a curious one. I've never come across this before on other Dell products, but it basically adjusts the colour temperature. It's designed for if you've got multiple monitors connected up and you want to try and match the colour temperature on them and you might want to set some to plus two, some to minus two or minus one, whatever it might be, depending on how cool or warm you want it to be. The problem I have with this is, regardless of what you set this to, it's actually far too cool. It's beyond 7000 Kelvin um, and most users will want 6500 Kelvin, possibly slightly warmer depending on their preferences. But basically this makes the monitor either cool or very cool, depending on the setting you use. So I think manual adjustments of the red, green and blue colour channels are a better way to match the monitors. Next there's movie. I'm not going to say too much about that. It just gives a very cool looking, very bluish tint to the image. It applies a weird sharpness filter. Not really very attractive. Game actually the same as custom colour or setting the colour temperature to 6500 Kelvin on this. One thing to know about the game mode, it doesn't change input lag or anything like that, but what it does do is it gives you some slightly different options to the other presets, so you can change the hue and the saturation. And the saturation is a digital saturation adjustment, a bit like using NVIDIA Digital Vibrance, but instead of in the graphics driver you're doing this on the monitor. So if you reduce that, things become far less saturated, you can make it completely monochrome if you want. If you increase this beyond 50%, what it does is it pulls shades closer to the edge of the colour gamut without expanding the colour gamut itself. So you do lose shade variety, things look unnatural, less accurate, but it does make things look a bit more saturated overall. So if you like that kind of look, by all means go for that, but if you want things to look as they should, just keep that on 50 Next there's colour temp, and you can set that to various different Kelvin values. So 10,000K being extremely cool tinted, and you can set it to 5,000K if you want a sort of low blue light setting. And I actually prefer this to the comfort view mode, as I explained in the written review, because it doesn't have a kind of green tint to it. It's a more neutral, but still warm looking low blue light setting, and it's still very effective. Last, but by no means least, is custom colour. And this allows you to manually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels to suit. There is input colour format. You can either set that to RGB or YPBPR, depending on the colour system you're using. Most users you will be using RGB, whether you're using a games console or most computer systems. If you're in doubt, just keep this set to RGB. 
as you'll see, otherwise things just have a very odd look. So you can tell if it's completely wrong. Next is reset color and that resets everything on the color menu to the factory defaults. There's display. This allows you to change the aspect ratio. This is a scaling setting and I'm gonna just quickly turn the monitor onto the full HD resolution, which is non-native, so I can show you what this does in a more specific way. So the monitor's now running full HD. It's using its interpolation or scaling process to display this and stretch it out across all 2560 by 1440 pixels on the screen. The aspect ratio setting wide 16 by 9 will maintain a 16 by 9 aspect ratio even if the resolution you selected is not 16 by 9. Of course this one is, it's full HD that I've selected so it doesn't really make a difference to how it's displayed. Auto resize and that will respect the aspect ratio of the source resolution you've selected and will try to accommodate that by having black borders if it needs them rather than stretching it across the entire screen. 4x3, which will force a 4x3 aspect ratio. Of course, if you're using a resolution which isn't 4x3 as I am now, it just looks sort of squished up and weird. You can see again, big black borders at the sides. And next there is one-to-one. -one. So that's a one-to-one -one pixel mapping feature. You get good black borders around the image. It only uses the pixels called for in the source resolution. So that keeps things looking as they should in terms of the sharpness, but of course you do get a lot of wasted screen space. Next up, the sharpness, and that's set to 50, the neutral position by default 50%. You can adjust that in increments of 10% according to your preferences. I think most users will find 50% optimal, but if you have slightly different preferences for a slight amount of extra sharpness, you could try 60%. But if you increase this further, it really just sort of gives an artificial over sharpened look to the image. The sharpness itself on this monitor, in terms of the pixel density and the sub pixel layout and all of that, it doesn't really have any issues with the sharpness. So you should just really leave it at 50% if you want a good natural look to the image. Response time, set that to normal or fast and that's explored in the written review. MST, multi-stream transport, and that means you can use the display port output of the monitor and connect multiple monitors together, multiple U2719Ds in particular, and you only use one port on your GPU, which can be useful. And there's an option to reset the display, that's the display menu to the factory defaults. Next there's menu, various different options here. You can change the language that the OSD is displayed in. You can rotate the OSD, so if you've got it set to portrait the monitor in the portrait orientation, the OSD will flip to portrait so you can actually use and read it with the monitor in portrait. There's transparency, so you can change the transparency effect of the OSD. It's set to 20% by default, which is just a mild transparency. You can have it completely opaque at 0% if you prefer, or have it more transparent. Timer, and that's the idle timeout period before the OSD automatically disappears after the last button press. So that's set to 20 seconds by default. I should really have increased this before doing the video because it has disappeared on me a few times without me wanting it to. If you're a complete ninja with the OSD system, you can have it set to five seconds or you can increase it if you prefer all the way up to 60 seconds. And there's an option to reset the menu to the factory defaults. Next is personalize. The main thing here is these two shortcut keys. So as I mentioned before, the first and second button, if you press that without going into the main menu system, they're, they're your shortcut keys. The shortcut key one by default preset modes, but if you want, you could have that set to give you a specific preset mode. So I've filled around with this a bit now. I've got the shortcut key one set to brightness and contrast. The shortcut key two set to change the preset to color temperature, just so I can show you how this works. So now I'm out of the OSD menu system and if I press the first button, I can quickly adjust the brightness and the contrast. Second button, quickly activate the color temp mode and you can change that, but it'll go back to the setting you were last using. So 5000K, which is a low blue light setting. So you can quickly activate that. The various other options. So you can have it set to input source or you can have it 
set to quickly activate a particular input so you can quickly cycle to HDMI or DisplayPort using this feature. Quickly change the aspect ratio so the scaling settings I've shown you or quickly rotate the OSD. Or if you prefer you can have it show all modes which is the default for the presets as well. Next is power button LED and that allows you to disable that little white glowing power LED you can just see at the bottom there and which I showed you earlier. You can have it off during active if you prefer so now you can see that the power button is no longer illuminated. So some people prefer that to be off when the monitor's on. You can have the USB ports so that they're off or on during standby. Off during standby is good if you're not using the ports because it minimizes standby power consumption of the monitor. But if you have them on during standby, it means you can use the USB ports or things connected to them whilst the monitor is actually switched off or on standby. When I say switched off in this context, it's technically still standby, so when you press the power button, it's in its low power state, it's using sort of a fraction of a watt, but that power consumption does go up a little bit if you've got the USB set to on during standby, even if you're not actively using those ports. Reset personalization resets everything on this particular part of the menu to the factory defaults. And finally, there's others, so there's display info, which gives you some basic information, such as the model number, the input source used, the resolution and the refresh rate, the display port version and the HDMI version currently being used. There's DDC slash CI, which is part of the plug and play functionality of the monitor. It allows you to use software to control the OSD. Dell has their own software, which will do that for you if you want. There's LCD conditioning. And this will cycle through various different colours. It's a standard Dell feature. It doesn't mean that this monitor has an issue with image retention or burning or anything like that. I didn't actually notice any at all when I was doing my normal testing for the review. As it says, it'll help reduce minor cases of image retention. And it just cycles various different shades on the monitor. And it can also help unstick pixels, but I find actually Usually if you've got a stuck pixel, you're pretty much stuck with that stuck pixel, pun intended, regardless of how many times you're cycling through the colours. But it's worth a try, you know, and, and there are various videos on YouTube which will do the same kind of thing. But this monitor, as with many Dell monitors, has an integrated cycle feature which will do this for you. You can see the firmware revision used by your monitor, the service tag as well, which you'd use for getting support for the monitor from Dell. Reset Others, which will reset the Others menu to the factory default, or a factory reset, which will reset everything to the factory defaults. So that's really all there is to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Dell U2719D. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, alongside information about how you can support the work that we do.